Welcome everybody to the great LFA pub quiz. Um, we will just wait a minute or so for everyone to arrive. Thank you to my two friends out there who promised they'd participate and hopefully to many, many more of you. Um, thank you to Rob, Bobby and Luke for organizing this brilliant quiz and uh, for allowing me to host it. If you don't know who I am, then congratulations, <laughs> that's better. Um, but I am Francesca Perry. I'm a journalist and an editor, and you've probably seen me at all those architecture events that we all go to. Um, thank you, LFA, for existing. Also for uh, the amazing array of digital events you've had to put on as a last minute response to the coronavirus crisis and how everything has had to adapt. Um, so everybody check out what else the LFA has to offer. Um, and I hope that everyone's arriving thus far. Um, we're only one minute in, so um, if you have if you are so inclined to have alcohol, please pour it now. Other beverage options are available. Um, so, okay, I'm going to just run down very quickly how it works. Uh, you should all be watching this on a YouTube stream. I'm very technically savvy. Um, <laughs> we are recording this. The Quizmasters are recording this on Zoom and we're streaming it to YouTube. So hopefully you only have to just watch us on YouTube. Um, by all means, comment if there are any issues or questions, but no spoilers, please. Um, I hope, or if you're up for it, you have teams going on. That's very cool. Um, and just use your own interpersonal Zooms or WhatsApp groups to chat with your teams remotely. Um, hopefully it should all be quite simple. Uh, okay, so you have to have a team name. You don't have to. No, you do have to. Um, come up with a team name and we have a Google Doc for you to input your team name. Uh, it, the link for it is in the description of the YouTube video. Um, obviously, please let us know if you can't see it, but get into that Google document and put your team names in. Um, you have like a minute or two to come up with hilarious team names. Um, and that is the document we'll use at the end after we tell you all the answers for you to put in your honest scores, okay? Um, basically, what will happen is there will be a slideshow up on the screen of all the questions we're asking um, so you'll be able to hear them from our quiz masters as well as see them on the screen. But also just in case you have to run off to get a drink or whatever, or you miss a question, we also have a link on the YouTube to another Google document, promise you we're not promoting Google here, um, of the questions being written out as we go. So you'll have a record of all of the questions that have been asked. Um, hmm, what else do I need to say? There's a big note here that says no cheating. So hopefully that's self-explanatory. Please don't cheat. Um, some of the questions are quite hard, but I'm genuinely fascinated to know who knows the answers. <laughs> um, and I also want to say that we are fundraising for Guys and St. Thomas's charity, looking after NHS workers, um, you don't have to donate, but if you want to, again, YouTube, description, link, et cetera, donate. Um, so that's the fundraising. I think, I think I've kind of gone through how it will work. We have seven rounds and seven questions per round. Hopefully that's all very simple. Primary school maths, 42. Oh my God, is it 42? Um, we have seven quiz masters. Luckily, I'm not gonna be asking all the questions because come on, that would just be too much. So we will have seven rounds and I'm gonna go through now 
and introduce you to all the quiz masters who are very great. Um, so first up uh, will be Tim Dunn, who is a historian and TV presenter. Um, and Tim will be running around on transport. Hooray! So say hi, Tim. Hi, how are you doing? Hi. Okay, I'm and then, <laughs> very good jumper, Tim. Um, so, second up, we have Gurmeet Shan, who's an architect and TV presenter. Are you all TV presenters, I swear? Um, <laughs> uh, and Gurmeet, your round will be London Landmark. Say hi. Hi, everybody. Woohoo. Um, okay, so our third round, um, unfortunately, our guest quiz master for the third round is not here, although she has a very, very good excuse. She's apparently on a call with a very high ranking government official. I can't even say who it is. Can I? I can't. I can't. Um, so uh, she is Sharon Aminose. She is Director of Infrastructure at the Ministry of Defence, amazing, uh, and also an illustrator who does the most beautiful, beautiful drawings. Um, and so that's going to be our picture round. Um, and it will be guess the building slash structure. Um, so that's fun. Um, then we'll have a little break. And if I haven't made it clear already, you should just be writing all the answers down by yourself. You don't have to input them anywhere write them down by yourself. And then when we read out the answers at the end, you'll figure out which ones you've got right. So our fourth guest quiz master is Jonathan Foyle, an architectural historian and broadcaster. Hi, Jonathan. Jonathan will be doing a round on temples, churches, and cathedrals. So <laughs> you better be ready. Um, our fifth round will be uh, hosted by Alice Rawson a design critic and author. Alice will be doing art and design in London. Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, our sixth round is from Robert Elms, a writer and broadcaster who will be doing true crime in London. Hello, Robert. <laughs> Robert is muted, I think. Um, okay, and then finally, uh, I know this all sounds like a lot, but I promise it will be Hello. <laughs> Um, <laughs> we will have Rob Fien, uh, who is one of the organizers of this wonderful quiz. And if I say so myself, more enthusiasm, Rob, um, a PR yeah. extraordinaire. So uh, Rob will be doing a round on what else? Pubs, the pub, the pub, pub quiz, the quiz of pubs, and pub quiz. Anyway, so that's hopefully something I'll know. I'm not participating. Don't worry. I know all the answers. So then we will go through the answers and you will figure out how clever you are. Very clever. Um, and then you'll go back to that Google document that you put your team names on and submit your scores honestly. And then we will announce the winner. There's a winning team. If you're a team by yourself, that's very cool, whatever. So I think I've gone through my, my list of things to say. Um, I hope that was riveting. If you're just joining late, um, hopefully all the information should be in the little YouTube description, all the key things you need to know. But without further ado, that's such a weird phrase. I have never said it before. Um, we should go to our first guest quiz master, Tim who will be taking us through a round on transport, which is very cool. So I will pass over to Tim now, I believe. It's me. Well, it's you <laughs> I can't believe, right, okay, thank you so much for joining us. This is so much fun. Obviously I'm bringing an on brand, uh, London Transport Museum uh, Christmas jumper, because of course it is Christmas right now, isn't it, right? I mean, I've got no idea what day it is, Tuesday, Wednesday, Christmas day. It's time for the quiz. Right, so we've set you seven transport ready questions. Not all necessarily the questions you're gonna expect. So if you know a little about London, you know a little about transport, you might be in for a surprise. You might know more than you think. So, with no further ado, <laughs> for your catchphrase from Jessica, let's go. Question number one. Until 1977, 
what was the Jubilee line originally going to be called? Now, we all know today's being a Jubilee line is one of those lines like the Lizzie line, Elizabeth line, Crossrail, that's been known as something different before it actually got built. What was it going to be called? Of course, it's now Jubilee line because it's the Jubilee uh, 1977 colour, silver colour. It was, it, was, it was designated that by the Conservative government in 77. But until that point, what was it going to be called? Give you a clue. It's related to something it was going to cross. Oh, question number two. There are lots and lots of streets and squares, and also alleys as well in the city of London. You know, there's loads of streets and squares and things. There's only one road, only one road that can be considered to be even partly in the square mile in the city of London. What is the name of that road? The only actual road that goes anywhere into the square mile city of London. What on earth is that street called? Give you a clue, it's something road. But what is it? Ah, oh, crikey. Question number three. The brilliant architectural writer Ian Nairn, who's a favourite of mine, absolute favourite of mine, Ian Nairn spoke about which station when he said, the plan belongs to a cathedral, not a railway station. It has the same kind of lyric poetry as the best rooms in the Sony Museum. And celebrate Ian Nairn, take a drink to Ian Nairn, because that's what he would have done right now. A very great man, writer of the Architectural Review, amongst others. Right, which station is talking about? He said the plan belongs to a cathedral. Which station is more like a cathedral than any other in its plan form? Next question, please. Now, this is going to be a contentious one for when you get to the answers. I know this, but what is the official name of the typeface used for all modern official signage on the London Underground? It's a very specific look. You see it right across London and right London too. The whole transport network uses this typeface or a derivative of it. What is that typeface famously called? You know, one of the defining iconic shows of London is this typeface. What is that typeface called? Question number five. What decade did the last of the original trams run? Now, I know there's trams, trams now down in Croydon and New Addington and so on, and they're great, but those big lumbering electric elephants, those double-decker trams, those red trams that you now see in the London Transport Museum, what was the decade they last ran in? There were lots of, uh, I remember there were lots of, uh, I don't remember it before my time, <laughs> I'll give you a clue, uh, and I'm 39. Um, the trams were departed uh, with a big celebration at the end of the night, it said down the side of them, we will never forget. So we've got trams from 20 years later. Right, what decade did they run? Question number six. This one is a specialist question for specialist people. And that's why we're here, because you know about architecture, probably. When it was built in 1952, this particular building had Europe's largest unsupported roof span. Which transport building and it's now grade two listed, so it can't be knocked down or not very easily anyway. What building is it? Is it a station? Is it something else? It's a big concrete building, and one you probably know, and you might kick yourself when you know what it is. What is that, 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 that building of 1952? And it is genuinely massive. What's the time? What have I got? Oh, quick, but then quickly, can we go back and do this again so I can just read the answer, read the questions? I'm rattling through these. Probably because I've had two glasses of wine. Right. <laughs> Question number seven. Which, now I know Robert Elms, who's also in your quiz masters tonight, is going to get this because he and I discussed this at least twice on his brilliant Saturday morning uh, show on Radio London. But I'm ask you now. Which is the oldest London railway terminus that is still running? 
which is the oldest London Railway terminus that is still running. And it is really very old indeed. Not necessarily the actual, the actual um, buildings itself, but what is the terminus, the site? What is the oldest terminus still running? Now, do you want to whiz back and I'll ask them all quickly again, so just recap on those questions again. Might, might help, we've got a bit of time. You got uh, what? Ooh, I've got three minutes. Question one, until 77, what was the Jubilee line originally going to be called until the Conservative Party got involved and played politics with it? I'm being honest about it. Number two, what is the name of the only road that runs into or through the square mile, the City of London? Number three, Ian Nairn said this about which railway station? The plan belongs to a cathedral, not a railway station. It has the same kind of lyric poetry as the very best rooms in the Sony Museum. Question four. What is the name of the typeface used for all modern official signage on the London Underground, an icon of our times and of our great city? Number five. What decade did the last of the original London trams run? Number six. When it was built in 1952, this massive and truly massive building had Europe's largest, <coughs> excuse me, unsupported roof span. <laughs> which concrete building for transport, which is now going to be listed by English Heritage or Historic England, is it? Number seven, which is the oldest London railway station, London terminus, that is still running to this day? Now, obviously, oh, really, really easy. And you all go, oh, I know all of those because you're London transport aficionados just like me. And don't worry if you haven't uh, got all those, you're bound to get some in the next couple of rounds because there are some fabulous uh, quiz masters coming up after this, after just to be announced in a minute. But um, gosh, this is brilliant. I feel, I, I feel surprised. <laughs> to be in Sorry? This is like an Oscar speech. I'm like, thank you, thank you. Well done. Oh, thank goodness. I used my time up. Woo! Cheers. Um, no, thank you very much, Tim. Um, we might be London transport aficionados, but we're not like you. We're not all wearing Christmas transport jumpers. <laughs> Although I wish we were. Um, okay. <laughs> um, thank you for that round. But uh, just to the other quiz masters, no repeating your round <laughs> it's not allowed but also for anyone who does miss a question or is joining us late there is a link in the youtube description to the google doc that we are updating throughout with all of the questions so you can reference them whenever you want okay so i need to rush myself um the second round is by gummy it's your round and you're doing london landmarks Woo! <laughs> Hi everybody, thanks Tim, what a great set of questions. Right, you horrible lot, it's my turn now. Seven questions coming up um, about London landmarks-ish. Should we kick off? In the summer of 2013, a 37-storey tower on Fenchurch Street, dubbed the Walkie Talkie Building, hit national headlines when the concave shape of the facade was said to direct the sun's rays onto a nearby parked car, causing much damage. What was the make of the car? Just an easy one to start off with. So what was the make of the melting car? Okay, next question. The much loved National Gallery just by Trafalgar Square is one of London's most visited attractions. It is wonderful. The Sainsbury Wing extension, which I love, was completed in 1991 by the architects Venturi Scott Brown. It was, however, not the original design. The original design was famously described by our very own Prince Charles as being like a monstrous carbuncle on the face of a much loved and elegant friend. Who were the architects of the original design? Those forgotten architects, who were they? Next question. In which area of London might you find Richard Ashcroft of the Verve walking down the street 
singing bitter sweet symphony so the broad area of london you can't just say north london or south london it needs to be a little bit more specific than that okay next one the architect sir giles gilbert scott designed the original telephone boxes which building which was later converted into an art gallery did he also design? That's an easy one. I'm almost embarrassed after Tim's questions to stick that in. Anyway, just give just give yourself all a point on that, you know. So which building did Sir Giles Gilbert Scott design? The next one. Which vegetable grows at 20 St. Mary Axe? Which vegetable grows at 20 St. Mary Axe? Okay, so question number 13. The British Museum had its own tube station. It closed in 1933 because of a local upcoming rival, Holborn Station, which opened that year. But for how many years do you think the British Museum tube station ran? How many years did the original British Museum tube station run? And my final question is each of the pods, each one of the pods at London Eye is numbered from or between one to 33. So each one of the pods at the London Eye is numbered from one to 33. How many pods are there at the London Eye? How many pods are there at the London Eye? Thank you so much. Good luck. Sorry, I was, <laughs> I was slow to react. Thank you so much. <laughs> we were just having a slight query gummy um about 20 st mary's acts is it actually 30 st mary's acts could be the, could the, could the be that is, i i don't want to give any clues away um, yeah let's say what vegetable grows between 20 and 30 <laughs> st mary acts if you want to get technical. You mean, no, wait, do you mean like on the building? Francesca, I can't oh say God. any more than that. <laughs> you will have a backlash. Okay. Want the answer? No, okay. you don't want the answer. I actually don't know the answer. I didn't check all the answers before this. Um, okay. Well, you know. It, look, it's, it's, uh, all I will say is this is a Fun London bit. landmarks seven questions right. yeah yeah yeah, yeah just it's, it's that, not that about vegetables well. exactly <laughs> okay okay fine um thank you thank you that was Pleasure. very fun. that was a very fun uh round okay so our third round oh gosh i have to do this now um <laughs> sharon aminose uh can't join us she's very very important <laughs> Not that any of our quiz masters are, but seriously, she has crazy cheers to do. Um, however, she has drawn the most amazing drawings and she has been drawing these buildings and structures and aspects of the London uh, landscape during lockdown. And she has been specifically uh, fundraising for a charity called SSAFA. I said it right, it, which is the Armed Forces Charity. So anyway, we just want to say thank you, Sharon, for these amazing drawings. And this is the picture round. Yay. Um, okay, so Luke, let's get going. Question number 15. What is this building? Just the name of the name of the building. You don't have to say like the architect or anything. Just the name. 
Um, lol, Gummy says, yes, it should be 30 St. Mary's X. Okay, thank you, Gummy. Um, <laughs> so uh, question 16. What is this building? I promise it'll be less annoying. Do I promise that? No, I don't. Um, yes, think and write. And drink. Think and write and drink. Okay, question 17. You can do this. What is this building? I should shout less probably. Um, <laughs> what do you think this building is? Hot clue, they're all in London. Wait, are they? No, yeah, they are. Um, okay, question 18. <clears throat> what is this? <laughs> what is this bridge? <laughs> Am I giving it away by calling it? Seriously, I'm not drunk. Um, what is this structure? Crazy. Okay. Question 19. And can I just say Sharon's drawings are really gorgeous. This is tricky. What is this building? I actually don't know this. Put your minds together, people. Think, 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 think. Okay, question number 20. Um, what is this place, huh? Uh, there are some people, there are some columns. <laughs> uh, please invite me to all your parties. Um, yeah, so what is this place, this building, this destination? Um, did that give anything away? I hope not. Okay, so wait, are there any more questions, Luke? Question number 21. Uh, the more eagle-eyed of you will have spotted that this is in the background of Tim's uh, Zoom. <laughs> um, hopefully this is an easy one, right? Because we all know some of you need the easy ones. I'm kidding, me, I need the easy ones. Um, what is this building? What is the name of it? Okay, I think that's it. Is that it? Take a break! Okay, I'm very pleased I did one round. Um, okay, seriously, take a break. I have some food on the on the hob. <laughs> I should probably eat. Um, we'll be gone for like, how long? Actually, no, I need help. It, like, it's 10 minutes, but is it 10 minutes? Well, should we have um, some chat with the remaining quiz masters before they leave? Yes. <laughs> I'm here for the whole thing. I'm not leaving. <laughs> but Tim, don't you have a um, uh, a very exciting TV program to be live tweeting? Yes, I also have to be presenting it uh, in half an hour's time. It's going to be awkward. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> it's called the architecture the railways built. I'm glad you asked me that, Francesca. Um, <laughs> Google. Uh, it's a glory. Oh, tonight, oh, tonight actually, we're looking at um, 55 Broadway, the old Transport for London oh, HQ. Is it 55 it's, it's, Broadway it's, or 45 Broadway? <laughs> 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 Just to, to make sure. Is it 35 St. Broadway acts? I mean, no one or even knows. <laughs> Just asking the question. It looks like a big potato. Okay. 55 Broadway, yeah. It's very beautiful inside. It's very cool. Yes, that starts at uh, in, in, in some time. But of course, you, if you're sticking to watch this and be part of the quiz, you can watch on Catch Up later. There's my plug. I've done my contractual <laughs> plug now. Yeah, we're streaming on Sky, no big deal. Um, <laughs> uh, cool, cool, cool. Quiz, quiz, quiz. Break, break, break. <laughs> Um, am I allowed to go have some food for like two minutes? Yeah, what time does the, the start up again? What time do we, do we start again? The behind we'll... the scenes boys, and they are, and they do want to be known as the boys, <laughs> refuse to speak out. Because we've got 85 people hanging on the every <laughs> word to carry on. And 
85, 85 people is a pretty big pub, Francesco. <laughs> this okay. is a chance for a cup of tea, maybe a, maybe to mix a tasty a gin and tonic. Cup of tea. A cup of tea. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, don't invite me anywhere. <laughs> no, but seriously. Um, yes, make some tea, eat food, keep yourself sustained for important, difficult quiz questions. Uh, and it says it's 7.40. We start off again in 10 minutes. Well, yeah, we're running a little bit ahead of schedule, um, but I think, you know, considering we're meant to be sustaining the atmosphere of a real pub quiz here, like I'm assuming that there have to be regular pee breaks for everyone. So now, now is your time. Seize the opportunity. Um, and if you missed any questions, you can always look through the sheet. Yes, yeah. or I can tell you them all over again for a third time, if that's No! Francesca, let me do your job. you want to fill up some time? If yeah. you are tuning in late, or if you're confused about some of the questions that were asked by completely incompetent people, no, I'm just talking about myself, um, you can go to the link in the YouTube um, description. You can tell I'm not a vlogger, right? I think vloggers would be much better at this. Um, all the questions are on the Google document that is linked to in the YouTube description. Um, so you can go back, check it. Um, please don't do your own Googling. <laughs> please don't cheat. <laughs> it's not fun that way. Um, yeah, so hope you're having fun. Um, we are going to resume in three minutes. Are you guys ready? Are you ready? Get I'm your drink. Bored. Have a peek. Do the thing. <laughs> um, okay. Take a break. Three more minutes. Um, Who's up next? Who's up first? Who's up? When am I up? Jonathan. Jonathan Foyle is next. <laughs> um, so yes, Jonathan, be ready for two minutes time. And we've got Robert Elms at what? Oh, I've got Alice at uh, 10 minutes after that. And Robert, you're at uh, eight o'clock because we're going so fast. We're going yeah, quickly. Really yeah. fast. Because we're very efficient people. And we understand that others have their own lives. Which means yeah. I might be eating my dinner while answering. <laughs> That's absolutely fine. I, as, I, as I mentioned before, I have something on the hop. <laughs> if, there, if there's anyone here who's a seasoned live professional broadcaster, it's you, Robert. So yeah. you, know, you, you can surely juggle eating and doing a live broadcast and, and a pub quiz at the same time. I've done it many times. Banding <laughs> <laughs> around this TV broadcaster thing, TV presenter. I'm just going to call myself a TV yeah, presenter as well because I feel left out, okay? So, I'm Ray, which is this the is my TV program. <laughs> it's called the Great LFA Pub Quiz. It's a very riveting show, and I hope you're all excited. Um, please pay me money, seriously. Um, okay, so we are going to, uh, I think, start up again. Um, wait, one second. About what? Okay, um, Jonathan. Jonathan, are you ready to do your round? Jonathan? Yeah, hi, I'm ready. Good, um, here you are, and it is your turn. Um, so Jonathan will be doing a round on temples, churches, and cathedrals. Everybody come back to the computer, sit down, sit down, pens, paper, etc. get ready, stop laughing. We know we're very funny. Okay, so Jonathan, I'm going to hand over to you now, um, and thank you so much. Great pleasure. Hi, everybody. I um, hope you're enjoying this um, night out. It's a rare thing, isn't it, these days? Um, I've, got a, I've got a drink lined up. It's my one concession to modernism. Uh, it's called a uh, La Courvoisier. It's a, it's a modern architecture gag for you, because what I've got is uh, old school. Not literally, old churches is what I'm dealing with. It's 2000 years of churches and historic buildings in London. So um, if we're going back um, way beyond memory lane into the old snickets and alleyways of uh, London, 
back around 2,000 years to kick off with our first question, which looks like this. Right, so in 1954, a mid-third century rectangular Roman temple was discovered beneath Walbrook in the city of London. A museum was built around these ruins in 2018. Got a lot of news in 2018, you might have seen it. So which god was the temple dedicated to? Give you a bit of time to chew over that one. 1954, third century Roman temple, and a museum was built around the ruins in 2018. You got that Roman God in your mind? Maybe we can move on to 23. Right, so if you go into Westminster Abbey, have a little look around the cloisters, you might pop down a couple of steps quite close to the chapter house and you'll find yourself in some standing Anglo-Saxon fabric. It dates to the 1050s when Edward the Confessor built Westminster Abbey. But that's outside the bounds of the City of London, right? Just by mentioning that because you do get some technicalities come back at you with questions like this. So we're in the bounds of the City of London and there's one piece of standing Anglo-Saxon fabric there. So only one City of London building has standing fabric dating to the Anglo-Saxon period. Um, it's a wall and it features an arch of reused Roman tiles, teguli, and it's set between a tower and nave of a particular church. And that wall and its arch, in a bomb blast in 1940, a silver lining of World War II, that one. Um, but in which church can you find that Anglo-Saxon arch? Should I give you a clue? Might do. It's got two alternative names, this church. Ever looked at a wonky arch in a London church? Thought, what on earth are those Tegulli doing there? It's that one. I'm going to give you a little while on this one. All right, so question 24. We're getting modern now. Um, it was commissioned by a man called Rahir in 1123. Remember? Um, it was partly destroyed by Henry VIII and it was um, over restored by an eager young um, Aston Webb before he put the facade on Buckingham Palace. He restored this church early in his career. Um, Aston Webb, always think of him as the Terry Thomas of, of architecture. You know what I mean? He's, he's bound to have driven an early sports car, isn't he? Um, anyway, and then that was the place that Hugh Grant almost married Duckface in Four Weddings and a Funeral. Um, so which London Priory Church is this? I mean, there aren't many, are there? Let's face it, there aren't many, so... Um, I thought that was, uh, I thought the Hugh Grant thing made that accessible. Right, let's move on. 25. Uh, whose tomb is that? Photograph copyright Jay Foyle. Um, and uh, there he is, a gilded image of, uh, well, you tell me, whose tomb is it? He's responsible for one of um, the London area's greatest of all buildings. It's a funny little uh, base, isn't it? It's a, it's a double decker. I, th I like to think that London buses got their idea from, from that tomb. I could be mistaken, but the bottom level there has got a Roman style door. Super interesting thing that. If you look behind the Roman style door, there's a cross, a shape carved within marble, where there was once a cross, probably of Latin or bell metal set within that, that shape. And that cross suggests there was some kind of holy relic set in the underside of that of that tomb so um who would do something like that who would get some relic of christ and be buried in a double decker monument you tell me ladies and gents and then we'll move on to 26. now here he is at st john smith square 
It's an early 18th century Westminster church by uh, the fabulous Thomas Archer, one of the most inventive of Baroque architects. Um, finished in 1728, ruined by firebombing in May 41, restored to become a concert venue, early, early music generally. Um, it's distinctive for its four corner towers. They rise each corner. Um, what nickname was given to it really on account of those four corner towers? I'll give you a clue to that extent. So St John Smith Square, Baroque building, quite flamboyant, Thomas Archer. Um, it was begun, here's a little clue, in the reign of Queen Anne and finished uh, in 1728, just into the reign of George II. Took a while, but you know, good things, good things do. What was the nickname given to it? And um, I will tell you, there's a, uh, there's a restaurant of this name in the crypt. Yeah, all right, move on then. 27, you've got that one. Um, oh yeah, now, a shocker this. I mean, the great thing to me about London's churches is that you go along the back streets and there are these oases of cool and calm on a summer's day. They are conversely warm um, and beautifully lit on a winter's day as well. There's something for all seasons in London churches. This one is an absolute stunner. Whatever the weather, whatever the season, um, I can't wait to go back and see this one. I haven't been for a while. So it is one of the most spectacularly coloured and detailed of London's churches. It's in Margaret Street, you know? Uh, north of Oxford Street is Margaret Street, built to the designs of William Butterfield between 1850 and 1858. And it's inventive polychromy influenced churches across the land. Which saint or saints was it dedicated to? William Butterfield's Margaret Street. Trips off the tongue. Do say if these are too easy. If they are, I shall refund my fee. More than happy. It'll support a lot of the festival next year. Um, moving on now to 28. So here we are. The last one of mine, the designer. This is up to date as far as I'm concerned. Um, it's the kind of thing that I write about. There we are, Canterbury Cathedral, 1170s. But um, the designer of Westminster Cathedral, born in 1839, was commissioned to design the building in 1894. Comes from Doncaster, this lad. Uh, he turned to the Byzantine architectural style for inspiration. Why? Well, because Westminster Abbey was already Gothic enough. What would Westminster Cathedral do to compete with it? It has to be something else. So off he went uh, down to the Mediterranean, a well-worn route for any architect to go and study the greats. He wanted to see Byzantine architecture, got to Venice, but then got cholera and didn't manage uh, to get to see the Hagia Sophia, which was ultimately the model for this cathedral, which was never actually finished, it's still unfinished. Now, what was his name? What was the designer of Westminster Cathedral's name who got cholera in Venice and whose building was never finished? And I'm really, to me, all the better for it. I love the fact it looks archeological even before it became a finished entity. Um, quite glorious, full of arts and crafts wonders there too. What was that architect's name? Thank you so much, Jonathan. Pleasure, uh, good night. I studied architectural history and I've been an architectural journalist for a long time and I don't know any of the answers to those questions. Were they shockers? I do apologize. <laughs> uh, you know, like I know that I like Westminster Cathedral and it's yeah. very beautiful. Um, anyway, I think I'm just a, a dum dum. Um, but thank you so much. Uh, P.S. What's this about fee? I didn't get any fee. <laughs> no, well, neither neither did I. It's 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 quite cold cynicism. That's all it is, really. But you know, um, it's currency okay. of a sort. Well, thank you so so much. Um, that was great. So now, uh, quiz people, we will move on to round five. Um, which is hosted by Alice Rawson. Alice, are you there? Yes. Yay, Alice. Okay, Alice is doing a round on London art, art and design. Very exciting. Here you go. 
Right, thank you, Francesca. Well, my questions are shorter and snappier than Jonathan's were. Um, I've tried to make some easy peasy and others trickier. They cover art and design throughout London, quite literally, in one case, and um, very different manifestations of it. So question number one. Okay, or question 29, I should say. Um, and this is for anyone who's familiar with the streets of East London. Which British sculptor made the Tree of Life on the facade of the Whitechapel Gallery? So if you're walking along Whitechapel High Street, you look up, there are beautiful gilded leaves on the facade of the gallery. Who made that? So question 30. And this is the question that's literally everywhere in London. Who designed the original diagrammatic map of the London Underground? Now, of course, this is one of the most famous icons of London. It was also a landmark in map design that other underground map designers and transport map designers have attempted to better ever since. They have all failed. It's a stunning example of design. So question 31, please. Which modernist sculptor made the winged figure, that's its name, which is on the side of John Lewis on Oxford Street? Think of one of Britain's most famous modernist sculptors and also try and imagine walking on Ox Oxford Street and looking up at John Lewis. So question 32, please. Now this one goes a little further out into the suburbs in Bexley Heath, who lived in and also co-designed the Red House in Bexley Heath, one of our most famous um, artists, designers, craftspeople and visual theorists, who lived in and co-designed the Red House. Question 33, uh, we're back in East London and back to contemporary art. So which fellow young British artist, YBA, um, ran a shop with Tracy Emin on Bethnal Green Road in 1993? Question 34, and we're in central London for this one in Trafalgar Square. Which artist exhibited Nelson's ship in a bottle alongside Nelson's column on Trafalgar Square in 2010? And if you think back to passing through Trafalgar Square at that time, you'd have looked up and you'd have seen this giant, quite extraordinary ship in a bottle. And then finally, question 35, and this is in the glittering West End, which French artist and poet painted the walls of the Lady Chapel in Notre Dame de France church on Leicester Place off Leicester Square. So he was an artist and poet, he was actually a dramatist as well, and a great queer icon, and he painted the walls of one of the sweetest, most charming churches in London. Next time you're on Leicester Square, you should definitely go there. So that is my questions. Best of luck to everyone. Sorry for the delay. Thank you so much, Alice. That was great. Um, so I hope you're all enjoying the quiz thus far. If you've missed any questions, there's a link to a Google Doc in the description of the YouTube video and you can revisit and check up on past questions there. We have two more rounds to go. And um, so next up will be Robert Elms, writer and broadcaster. Uh, Robert is going to do a round on true crime in London. Personally, I think it's very gruesome, but hey, Robert chose <laughs> this topic. Um, so Robert, I shall pass over to you now. Robert is muted. Robert, unmute yourself. I've unmuted myself. How's that? <laughs> yes, better. Okay. Perfect. This question is all about horrible murders. Um, and they're all famous murders and famous murderers. And I will give you the location. I will also give you the decade, just to help a little. And then you've got to tell me the murderer. And there's one murderer in each instance. And they're all infamous. Infamy, infamy. They've all got it in for them. Um, so that's what we're doing on this one, right? So in each question, the, the clue is an address or a place, and the answer is a murderer. One. And I'll give you a clue. There's six men and one woman. 
which is probably about the, the balance of murders, I think. Okay, first question. And this is one that spans two decades. This was the 1940s and 1950s. And the address of the murders, and they were plural, is 10 Rillington Place in W11. Name that murderer. And I'll give you an extra little clue, and this is absolutely true. My mum and dad nearly lived there. They went and looked to take rooms there when they first got married. So 1940s and 1950s, 10 Rillington Place, name the murderer. Second clue, 1960s. One of the most famous murders in 20th century London history took place at the Blind Beggar Pub in E1. I can even tell you what was playing on the jukebox while it occurred. The sun ain't gonna shine anymore apparently, which is very apt because it wasn't for one person. Who committed the murder at the Blind Beggar Pub in E1 in the 1960s? So that's the second question. The third question, who committed a murder in the 1880s in Mitre Square, which these days is EC3. You must get this one. I won't say arguably London's most famous murderer, but he probably, oh, they probably are. So who committed a murder in the 1880s in Mitre Square, EC3? Fourth question, Hampstead, NW3, the Magdala Public House was the site of a famous murder. Also the subject of a movie, if that gives you a clue. Who committed the murder? Outside, it was actually outside the pub rather than inside, the Magdala Public House in, 1950, in the 1950s. And I will say that for years, there were bullet holes in the wall, or at least we thought they were. And then the, the owner of the pub told me that he'd put them in with a chisel to attract the tourists. So the Magdala Public House in NW3, who committed a murder there? Fifth question. This might be the toughest one. Evering Road N16 which is up in Stoke Newington. Um, it was a party late at night that you probably wouldn't want it to have been at. And a murder was committed there. I think this might be the toughest question. It was in the 1960s and it was at Ev 97 Evering Road N16. Right, two more, mur two more grisly murders to go. The next one is the most recent took place in the, the 1980s and it was at Cranley, well they, oh, right, I'll give you a clue here, this is multiple murders, at Cranley Gardens N10, which is Muswell Hill, basically, or yeah, I think that's Muswell Hill, Cranley 23, Cranley Gardens N10. One more horrible murder to go. And this is probably my favorite murder of them all. And it took place above a leather goods shop. And I don't mean that sort of leather. I mean, they sold handbags and shoes and things. At 304 Holloway Road, N7. And it was in the 1960s. So you're on Holloway Road in the 1960s, above a leather goods shop. Somebody who was famous for doing other things committed an horrible murder. In fact, he murdered his landlady, if that gives you a clue. So I'll run through them all very briefly. 1940s and 50s, 10 Rillington Place, W11. 1960s, the Blind Beggar Pub, E1. The 1880s, Mitre Square, EC3. 
1950s, the Magdala Public House in Hampstead, NW3. 1960s, Evering Road, Stoke Newington, N16. 1980s, Cranley Gardens, N10. And then in the 1960s, 304 Holloway Road, N7, Name the Murderers. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope your blood runs cold. Uh, thank you, <laughs> Robert. No, thank you so much. Uh, I don't know any of the answers of them. that. But, you know, maybe it's a nice thing that I don't know the names of murderers, famous murderers. Um, but, you know, cool, cool to know that, like, you know, you stay up at night thinking about murders in London. Um, so, okay, we have one more round to go. Um, it's, a, it's a little less morbid than the, the murder round. <laughs> Um, it's about pubs, yeah, pubs, 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 beers, pubs. Um, so Rob, Rob Fien is going to be uh, presenting this round and I shall pass over to him. Go. Hello, hi. Yes, this is slightly terrifying because every single other quiz master is an expert in their field and I am but an enthusiastic amateur. Um, I love pubs and I've been to all of the pubs in this round and many more. So um, shall we get going and I'll go nice and slowly, but I don't think you'll need it because these are not as tricky as some of the uh, cathedrals and burial grounds um, and free span concrete roofs that we've seen before. So, <laughs> Um, <clears throat> the first question is related to a, a fine old pub, The Grapes in Limehouse. And if you've ever been to Limehouse, uh, you'll definitely have been to this pub, I'm sure. And if you haven't, then I recommend you purposely make a trip down to see The Grapes, which has inspired Charles Dickens. Um, and it appeared in the opening chapter of Our Mutual Friend. But which well-known thespian has been a co-owner of the pub since 2011. He's a, he's a very flamboyant landlord. And if you, if you go on the right day, you could probably see him on the deck having a glass of red wine. And I, and I honestly think it's one of the finest rundown, but lovely little pubs in London. So which thespian has been a co-owner since 2011? Relatively recent purchase. Next question. Which aptly named pub in Soho, another great one, which I'm sure Mr. Elms has frequented many times, was used by Charles de Gaulle in the Second World War? Which aptly named pub? A great, a great little boozer. Um, unfortunately, if you're in the, in the market for a pint, you can't get one here because they only serve halves. Okay, that's, maybe that's not a clue. Uh, next question. There is a little pub down a little, little tiny cute road in Rotherhithe that shares its name with the ship that first transported the Puritan pilgrims to America in 1620. In fact, I believe that is because it set off from this very point on the Thames. But what is it called? Maybe you know the ship, maybe you know the pub. There's only one name, so there's only one point. Again, small pub, little road, but great terrace overlooking the river, good for evenings. Or if maybe you're popping by the Brunel Museum, I'd swing by and have a drink. Next question. London, you've, now you've all been to London Bridge because it's the old, it's uh, uh, the, one of the most famous terminuses in London. And the George Inn is one of the oldest pubs. But which English playwright was said to have propped up the bar? What kind of playwright would be hanging out in Southwark at some point in the grand history of London? So 
take a while to think about it. And then maybe we should move on to the next question. Now, legend has it, and I say legend, I don't know how verified this is, but legend has it that the Star Tavern in Belgravia was used by the gang that pulled off the Great Train robbery. And they used it to plan their attack. But what year, and I will only accept the year because it's such a famous robbery, what year did the robbery take place? So that's the great planning, the great train robbery, but what year did the robbery itself take place? The next question, which highwayman, if you know your highwayman history, was a regular at the Spaniards Inn in Hampstead in the 1700s? I don't know why I put in the date because I don't know if highwaymen went, went much beyond the 1700s, but anyway, which highwayman was a regular at the Spaniards Inn in Hampstead? And I think that is the end. Oh no, there's one more question. A great question. No more clues. What manifesto was drafted in the Red Lion pub on Great Windmill Street? If you don't know where Great Windmill Street is, that's up to you. And if you don't know which manifesto it was, then you're not going to get the answer right. But what manifesto was drafted in the Red Lion pub on Great Windmill Street? And it goes to show that pubs are just the centre of everything, where all good things happen. And that is your conclusion. Yes. <laughs> End. Um, love the Red Lion Pub. I'm not going to give any clues as to where or what it is, but it's a firm favourite. Um, okay, so thank you very much, Rob, for your fun pub round. Um, now we are going to read out the answers, but I have been told by a participant, hi Lauren, um, that we have been going a little bit far. So I think we should have, you all deserve like three minutes to kind of go back through all the questions. Uh, we're not gonna do it on the screen. You've got the link to the Google document in the YouTube um, and uh, you can go back and look at all the questions that we've asked throughout the entire seven rounds. Um, and yes, have a little think. Um, in the meantime, by all means, like shut off the volume and don't listen to me uh, while you go back. Uh, in the meantime, I've decided to like kill the time by showing you all my books about London. I'm cool, right? I have friends. Um, okay, so <laughs> I have two books about the London underground. Two. This one tells you everything about the names of each London underground station. I have Little, little fact, um, this isn't part of the pub quiz at all. Uh, you can obviously see that I'm like desperate to be part of the pub quiz. Um, but there are, this is just like a fun question, not part of the quiz. There are six stations named after taverns on the London Underground Network. Taverns meaning like, no big deal. Um, they are, can you guess them? Okay, seriously, they are, I did this at my Young Urbanist pub quiz, so some of you might know. Um, Elephant and Castle, Angel, Manor House, Queensway, Royal Oak, and Swiss Cottage. <gasps> Stations named after drinking establishments. Whatever next? Um, okay, so those are my, my two books. I have one about Londoners. It's, you know, about Londoners. I have one called The Future of London. But, you know, it was written, oh, it's very pretty, actually. Look at that. That's nice. It's very nice. Lovely. It was written, you know, very long time ago. The date is like whatever date means that the pages are brown now. That's the date that it was written. Um, the Faber Book of London. Can you tell I'm a geek? I'm a big geek. The alf An Alphabet of London. A very old atlas and guide to London. Look, crazy. Anyone who knows me knows I love old maps. Also, this is my favorite one. This is my favorite one. It's just like a big old book about London. 
Um, very cool. I like it a lot. Okay, so that was the um, that was the time filler. That was me going through my books. I hope that you have had a little bit of a moment to <laughs> check the questions. Um, so now we are going to go to the answers. Are you ready? I can't hear you. <laughs> I can't hear you. No, I genuinely can't hear you. Um, so I think we're going to go into the answers now and uh, our lovely quiz organizer and pub round host Rob Fien is going to take you through the answers. It's me again. It's me again doing the answers. So uh, hopefully we don't need to go quite so slowly, I guess, because you've already written down all your answers and then it's one point per answer. There are no half points. There are no uh, double points. Um, so just, uh, you should have, by the end of this, you should have a score out of 49. Uh, and if we have a tie, we have a bonus question. So, uh, without further ado, let's start going through them. And I'll try and give you time to mark them off. Never done this before, and I can't hear from anyone if I'm going too fast or too slow. So, round one, Tim Dunn's transport round. He asked you, what was the Jubilee line originally set to be called? The answer was the fleet line. Good one. Okay, I hope you've all had time to view that. Let's do the next one. There are many streets and squares and alleys in the city of London. There's only one road that we can be considered to be even partly in it. The name of that road is Goswell Road. Ah, oh, a fine road. Many good things on Goswell Road. I did not know that. Next question, maybe. Um, Ian Nairn, speaking of which London railway station, when he gave it a cathedral-like description, kind of lyric poetry, I love this quote, uh, the answer, of course, is Paddington. Could have done a sort of bare clue, but I guess that would have totally given the game away. Paddington. Official typeface, I will be so amazed if someone, if someone gets this right, um, I, would, I, I think they should put a little note in their scores to say I got this um, because it's, it's great knowledge, but it's pretty specific. Uh, official typeface is uh, Johnston, but I've been told we will also accept New Johnston, Johnston 100, <laughs> but it is officially Johnston 100. So no extra points, but a drink, says Tim. What decade did the last original London trams run? The 1950s, 1950s. That kind of makes sense. I was wondering if it was gonna upend me that one, but I think that's about right. Next question. Largest unsupported roof span. I knew this because um, I used to live here uh, for a time opposite Will Self. And the answer is Stockwell Bus Garage. I think Will Self actually campaigned to have the listing, maybe. He's certainly, certainly a big fan. Next question. the oldest London railway terminus that is still running, I almost gave it away when I was doing my pub round, is London Bridge, 1836. I thought it'd be Waterloo, but then I'm a Southwest London boy. So that takes us on to the next round. Round two from Gourmet. London landmarks, the car that was fried by the walkie talkie was a beautiful Jaguar. Nice car, shame about the parking in that instance. I think they also tried to fry an egg on it or they definitely fried an egg somewhere under the heat of that massive curvaceous building. Next question. 
the National Gallery, which had the carbuncle on the face of a much loved and elegant friend. A lot of people get this wrong because they think it's someone maybe a little bit more famous, depending on your perspective. But the answer is Arends Burton Korolek. And I think we can accept ABK as well. I think a lot of people know them as ABK. I think that's all right. It's pretty specific knowledge. Next one. Richard Ashcroft was wandering around singing Bittersweet Symphony in Hoxton. And I think um, he said, not going to accept East London, but name of an area. So if you've got Hoxton, good for you. Now I would have known this one as well because I'm a big fan of red telephone boxes and Sir Giles Gilbert Scott and the contemporary art gallery that he also designed is the Tate Modern. Got to be up there with one of the most famous contemporary art galleries in the world. So I think he said, I think Gurmit thought that was a pretty easy one. So I hope you got that. Next one. Rob, sorry, what if people use the original name of the building, which was like something, something power station? Uh, I would say that's totally fine because that's amazing knowledge. I don't actually know the name, <laughs> but you're like, it was a power station to start off with. It wasn't just the name. Uh, yeah, it was probably Bankside Power Station, wasn't it? And I would say that's totally fine because that is the building he designed. Yeah, okay, cool. Which vegetable grows at 30 St. Mary Axe? That's not a two you're seeing, it's an illusion. It's really a three. The vegetable that grows at 30 St. Mary Axe, of course, is a gherkin or the gherkin. Um, so cryptic, cryptic building fun from uh, the architect there. Next question. Now this one, I did not know. The British Museum had its own tube station which closed in 1933 uh, because of Holborn, which is a tube station I hate. And uh, how long did it run for? 33 years, 33 years. Maybe there's some, there was some clue to that uh, very specific question or real toughie. Next question. Each of the pods at the London Eye, you may, have, you may have guessed this one, a little bit of sort of logic for you to work out. How many pods are there? It's 32, classic number 13 emitted, because of course, that means if you were to count them, you would automatically go 12, 14. You, you would obviously do that. Therefore, saving anyone from any bad luck while riding around and around on a giant wheel looking over London, which, the thought of which terrifies me. Next is the picture round. So now we're gonna show you the full image, I believe, as we read out the answer. So we did a crop before. So question 15, the answer was the VNA. And I love that this is a courtyard shot because that is my favorite VNA elevation. Question 16. Uh, quite tough when you crop it in, but it's Saddler's Wells. Saddler's Wells, where they do the ballet stuff. Question 17. I thought this was a tough crop to give, but maybe if you're, you know, an operatic aficionado, you'd have got this. It's the Royal Opera House. I always, I always look at the great big, you know, glass bit, but the pillars are there. Next one. A little bit of structure here, a little bit of some of the probably the most famous structure in London and possibly, you know, throughout engineering, it is Tower Bridge. I like these little sort of confetti that uh, Sharon adds to her drawings, giving a sort of celebratory feel. The next one, a real close crop, close crop, that's hard to say, especially after a beer. Uh, but if you recognize that clock, and the colour of the building, you'll know it's Fortnum and Masons. We had to crop that one because I think it says Fortnum and Masons on the drawing. Next one. 
Now, this would be easy if you've tried to take kids around central London and you just want some outside space for them to run around and scream and shout because you would go to Somerset House. Obviously, it looks a little bit different in the winter because they fill it with a giant ice rink. And sometimes in the summer, people watching films. Love Somerset House. Next. Surely easy. I mean, we had to crop it, but I would be flabbergasted if no one, under, no one got that this was the BT Tower. I don't think there are any other thin towers covered in satellite dishes in London. Let's keep going. Jonathan Foyle's mega hard round. I did know one of these from a recent BBC4 programme, but let's go. Oh, and of course, you should know this. People should really, really should know this. The uh, Roman temple discovered underneath Walbrook is Temple of Mithras. And I believe that since they uh, haven't been yet, but since they completed Bloomberg, you can now go and have a little wander around. Lovely. Next one. Only one city of London building has standing fabric dating to the Anglo-Saxon period. Oh, in which church can you find it? All Hallows by the Tower, sometimes called All Hallows Barking. I don't think I've been there, but I'm going, I'm going to visit every question in this quiz as a punishment for putting you all through this. Next one. Uh, commissioned by Rahir, partly destroyed by Henry VIII. Starred in for when it's in a funeral, the church is St. Bartholomew Smithfield. I think that's going to be a real kick yourself one because if you, because it's such a great church and uh, such a funny film. This too. Now I knew this because my uh, wife is a big medieval fan. Uh, the tomb belongs to a very important person. It's Henry III, the king who actually rebuilt Westminster Abbey. Next question in this round. It's all about um, the nickname given to uh, the four corner towers of this uh, square. Um, there were lots of clues here from Jonathan. I think he wanted to give you an easy ride. So if you were listening, you might have guessed that it was Queen Anne's footstool. And the footstool restaurant is in the crypt. I've not been there either. But I'm, I love, I love crypts and I love restaurants. So I'm going to go. Next question. Uh, so which saints are, I like this. I really like the answer to this question. Which saint or saints was it dedicated to? I hope some of you got this right. The answer was all saints like it. The answer is all saints. And then I believe the final question, I didn't know this, but I love Westminster Cathedral. I love that it's Byzantine. I wish there was more Byzantine architecture in London. Uh, what was the name of the architect, designer? John Francis Bentley, a man I'm going to look up after this and check out his other work. I can't, I can't believe, I don't know if he achieved anything as great as Westminster Abbey Cathedral. Next, the art and design round. I knew these. I hope you did too. First question, uh, the British sculpture responsible for the tree of life on the facade of the Whitechapel Gallery, a beautiful, beautiful golden -y sculpture was Rachel White Reed. Very different to her concrete house. 
Remember, one point per question, per answer. Uh, who designed the original diagrammatic map of the London Underground? Uh, this annoyed me because I did know and then I forgot. And the answer is Harry Beck. But we will accept Henry Beck, of course. I'm hoping Francesca knew that with her love of tube maps and old maps. I did not. I am not clever. That is all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question. The modernist sculptor who made the winged figure on St John Lewis door. I always stop and look at this uh, sculpture. I love it. And I think it's a real shame that loads of people just sort of walk past or maybe, or maybe it's fine that it just becomes a background part of the city. Uh, but the artist responsible was, of course, Barbara Hepworth. Beautiful, beautiful, intricate, delicate sculpture. Next question. Who lived in and co-designed the Red House in Bexley Heath? Now, I didn't get this, and my wife described me as an idiot because uh, we live in Walthamstow and we're very... We're very close to the William Morris Gallery. And then of course the answer was William Morris. Embarrassing that I didn't get that. Next question. Which fellow YBA artist ran a shop with Tracy Emin on Bethnal Greed Road in 1993? I'd have loved to have gone to that shop. Uh, the answer was Sarah Lucas. Next question. Uh, which artist exhibited Nelson's ship in a bottle alongside Nelson's column? And I now believe it is still at the Maritime Museum in Greenwich. Another sculpture which I just go and stare at for hours because the patterns on the sails are so beautiful. And the answer is Yinka Shonabare. Hats off to you if you remembered uh, uh, the name because the fourth plinth seems to come and go so quickly. But if you're a Greenwich fan, maybe you knew that. Next question. Which French artist and poet painted the walls of the Lady Chapel in Notre Dame de France Church on Leicester Place? The answer was Jean Cocteau. Can't say Jean Cocteau without pretending to be French. And I believe that Jean is the end of Alice's Round. Now we get on to the grisly late night murderous round by Robert Elms. Could have used your logic to work out some of these via the era, I reckon, if you didn't know the answer already. In the 90s and 40s, in 10 Rillington Place, Yes, I looked this up after Robert told me about it. A lot of murders happened and they were committed by John Christie. Very nasty stuff, John Christie. Next answer, question answer. Probably as Robert said, most one of the most famous murders in London in the Blind Beggar pub in the good old East End. The 1960s was Ronnie Cray. Now I don't, I don't know what Robert thinks about this. I don't know if maybe we should unmute him. If you're allowed to say a Cray brother or not. I don't think so, given a later question. Okay, all right, there you go. There you go. If you said Reggie for answer, for answer 37, there's, there's no, uh, there's no uh, slack there. So the next question would be, 1880s, we tried to get the most atmospheric picture we could of Mitre Square. Please tell me that you used your logical brains to say, Jack the Ripper, as Robert said, probably the most famous murderer in London, maybe the world, because people love that story. Next question. The Magdala Public House. Um, in NW3 in the 1950s. Now, if you know your capital punishment history, I believe that's right, 
you will have uh, you will have known this one. There's an extra extra layer of history attached to this murderer. It was Ruth Ellis, who's the uh, I think the last woman to be hanged. Next question. A hard one, but the in the 1960s, if you know your uh, Cray brothers' history and you were on point with the earlier one, you might have known that in 97 Evering Road, a murder was committed by Reggie Cray. The other, the other Cray brother, both of whom obviously portrayed by Tom Hardy. I don't know, I'll ask Robert if he can, if he's still online, what he thinks of the uh, Tom Hardy depiction. Um, I didn't think it was very good. I thought the Kemp brothers film was better, personally. And that's not because you're, you're, aren't you good friends with the, Kent good friends with the Kent Brothers? I thought the Tom Hardy one was overly theatrical. It was pretty dramatic. Yeah. Okay, next question. In the 1980s at 23 Cranley Gardens, as Robert said, the most recent of these grisly, gruesome murders, someone was murdered by, or some people were murdered by Dennis Nielsen. Dennis Nielsen. I didn't know. I didn't know his name, but if I hear it again, I shall quake with fear. And the final, the final true crime murder mystery uh, question takes us to three hundred four Holloway Road, nineteen sixties. You might have got this if you're into your music history. It was Joe Meek. Joe Meek was the murderer at three hundred four Holloway Road. Okay, we're coming into the last and potentially best round of the pub quiz. The pub pub quiz. I hope you got these. Uh, first question. That wonderful thespian and co-owner of the Grapes pub in Limehouse, who can be seen drinking there, is Sir Ian McKellen. Wonderful Sir Ian saved a pub from uh, being closed and a very fine fellow. The next question, the aptly named pub. I tried to make this a little bit obvious with the aptly suggestion there. Uh, it was used by Charles de Gaulle in the Second World War was the French house. Half pints, but they taste sweeter for it. The next question and answer is, the pub in Rotherhithe that birthed the Puritan pilgrims to America in 1620 is called the Mayflower. Same name as the ship. I'm sure Tim will tell me that somehow there's some extra trivia attached to that. And the next question and answer, in the George Inn, I think uh, the geezer who would have propped up the bar no less than Will Shakespeare. I don't know if we know that as a fact, but he was there, it was there. Let's do the maths. Next question. The Star Tavern in Belgravia could have hosted the great train robbers and they robbed that train in 1963. Sorry if you were one or two out, I'm only gonna take 63 as the answer. Next question, the highwaymen. I mean, I don't know how many highwaymen are known, uh, really, to be honest with you. So if you've heard of any, you may have guessed that the Spaniards Inn uh, was frequented by Dick Turpin, Mighty Dick. Shouldn't have said that, says Francesca, but it's just nerds. Okay, and that's the end of my round. And I think people might need little while to tot up this. Oh no, I did this before. There is one more question. The manifesto, which was drafted in the Red Line pub, the Red Line pub that Francesca loves, on Great Windmill Street, was the communist manifesto. Thank you, Marks. I'm glad I'm not the only person who doesn't know what seven times seven is. <laughs> 
thank you thank you um cool thank you Rob for telling us all the answers um I hope you are all at home very elated about how many questions you got right um so what do what do our quiz masters think Francesco what do they think <laughs> um what do you think quiz masters are you happy with the quiz <laughs> oh that was great i thought everyone's questions were really hard except mine because <laughs> <laughs> i knew the answers to mine um i should just say now is the time for everyone to top up their scores and then put your score into the Google Doc spreadsheet where you put your team name um, and so we'll give you guys a couple of minutes in order to do that and we'll wait until you've all put your very honest scores on there and then we shall announce the winner. I'm hoping I'll get told who the winner is with who the winning team is. Um, but yeah, guys, do you, want, do you want to do some banter in the meantime? <laughs> <laughs> they were all good. They, they were great questions. Th thank you, everyone, for attempting some of those really, really niche ones. I know we, we all challenged you. Uh, mean, Jonathan? <laughs> I'm Jonathan. I've, 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 we, th 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 there is someone who you know in this room. <laughs> uh, and and uh, we were challenged on those questions of the, the oh. churches. Well, you know, it comes with apologies, um, but I have to say, watching watching the other questions, all the rounds are so different. It felt like actually a bit of a walk around London, and it's it's such a while since I've done that. So um, that was quite vicarious, the whole experience. You know, um, there are a few. I think you you, you do kick yourself because London's got such knockout buildings and such great variety as well. And um, I went into. Uh, one of the questions I had was about duck face in, in four weddings, you know, uh, St. Bartholomew Smithfield. And um, I heard there was a concert in there. Um, Is it St. Bartholomew the Less? Oh, there's St. Bartholomew the Great and St. Bart's the Less. And of course, St. Bartholomew's Hospital near, nearby. It's all St. Bart's. You know, he, he of the flayed skin, isn't it? Um, so, um, yeah, I went, went to a concert there and found myself right in the middle of a kind of deeply Catholic ceremony, you know, <laughs> of putting ash on foreheads, that kind of thing. And it was just another world. It's a great thing about London. You know, down a side street, you, you get immersed in all kinds of different things. So I think this quiz was rather like that, you know, as a little voyage of discovery. So if you didn't know the answer to the questions, hopefully it kind of sparked your... Um, you know, imagination, curiosity on some more things to discover. I mean, I, I, I realise there's a lot of stuff that I don't know about London from watching this. And uh, I, do, I was reminded one of Robert's questions about the house in Muswell Hill. I remember 2005, 2006, we were looking for a place in London and one house was unfathomably cheap. And the reason is, <clears throat> Robert, because... Um, because of the murderer, the Dennis Nielsen murder was in that house. And so, you know, we, we backed off like everybody else did. You can probably get it for about £8.50, I think. Not anymore, you couldn't. You couldn't. They've <laughs> <laughs> all forgotten. <laughs> but genuinely, the first one, 10 Millington Place, yeah. which is in Notting Hill, it's gone completely now. It's been totally knocked down and redeveloped. But, but my parents, when they first got married, my mum was 18, my dad was 20. They were looking for somewhere to live and they went and looked at a room there. Um, and literally my mum said, we didn't take it because your dad said he thought he was a bit creepy. And if they had have taken it, I wouldn't be here now because he murdered his, the people who stayed in his house. Absolutely amazing. That's so dark. That's <laughs> really dark. <Yeah. clears throat> um, anyway, this is a pub quiz. There is a winner. So I hope that everyone participating has put their scores in the spreadsheet. Can I get told who the winner is? <laughs> I'm looking at the score sheet now. Um, has everyone put their score in? As far as we can, I can see, yeah. Ha! So, How many took part? Sorry, I'm just saying ha, because I read the name of the winning team and it's so you have you have that information? I apparently have that information according to Bobby. 
Okay, I'll leave it to you to say. Um, okay, so I don't know, this happened in the last thing. Winning team is the Bartlett boys. And that is just the most cliche thing I could possibly say. But apparently that's the winning team. What score? Congratulations. You are boys and you went to the Bartlett. So, of course, you win a pub quiz about architecture. What score? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry? What score? Oh, yeah. What is the score? Um, I, they, got, I'm told. They, got, they got an amazing 47 points wow. out of 49. That's they insane. Said, Slash, well, did they cheat? Did they cheat? And they, they said, like, they, they, like, see, we were all too easy. Uh, did they get wrong? No. They said they said they missed they missed Henry the uh, Third uh, and All Hallows. Oh. How many people are in their team? Do we know? I do not have a record of that. Because if it's like a hundred, then that ain't fair. But anyway, congratulations, Bartlett boys! You're very, 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 very clever. Um, who is second? Second is Sir Herbert Walker. Congrats! I don't know what the the um, the score is. Can you tell I'm being texted what the answers are? 44. Um, I got 44. 44. Okay. And then third is, how do I have to say these words? Bance function with 41. <laughs> so Butler Boys, Sir Herbert Walker and Bance function. Well done. Obviously Butler Boys, you are the winning team. I would love Herbert to Walker. Yeah. That is. That's a group of, of railway people. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Um, well, thank you everyone for participating. And thank you so much to our quiz masters for um, entertaining us with all of the questions. Um, this was my first pub quiz hosting online. It was very strange. I can't see it. <laughs> But I, I hope it worked. Um, so, yeah, congratulations to everyone. To everyone, full stop. Yes, you get a medal for participating. Um, and, and if you liked this quiz, it will be available on YouTube. Like subscribe to our YouTube channel. <laughs> and it will, it will be, the, the, you can share it with your friends. It will be available online as a permanent archive of brilliant knowledge. I'm very scared about this that this will be online forever. <laughs> um, so, hey, you did it. You got through the great LFA pub quiz, everybody. Um, yeah. Congratulations.